Hello everybody, I'm Cheryl Tally Moss and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I save money. The first thing I'm going to share with you is how I save money on my electricity bill. And I do that by incorporating some solar motion sensor lights in my home. Now I have them, over 20 of them around the food forest. Uh, and one night I was thinking, why can't I do that? Why can't I bring some of those lights inside? So I ordered some extra lights and now I have some and I'm gonna share with you how I saved $40 off of my recent electricity bill by uh, using some of these lights. And then I'm gonna share with you how I was able to take $6, actually it was $5.90, worth of chicken, 10 pounds of chicken legs and thighs that I found on sale uh, at Kroger's and I pressure canned them. And I'm gonna take you through the procedure and I'm gonna show you how you can do this anytime you find any type of meat on sale or it could be vegetables or fruit that you can catch on sale and you basically can do the same thing. But I can take this chicken and I can make chicken tetrazzini, I can make chicken and noodles, I can make chicken soup, I have some bone broth from the chicken, and I'll show you how I made that. And also, you can make chicken salad if you drain it, barbecue pulled chicken sandwich, there's so much that you can make with it, and it cost me less than $6. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna take you through that procedure and I hope you find something useful from this video because that's my intent, is to help people, especially senior citizens, uh, save as much money as they can because we're, most of us are living on a fixed income and food is getting higher and higher. And in fact, the expense of everything is going up. So let me show you how you can make some money, okay? Let's get started. I decided to expand the scope of my channel and bring you more than just gardening tips. So from here on out, the Pearls from Cheryl segment will include uh, ways that you can save money. And I uh, mentioned in my introduction that I saved $40 on my last electricity bill and I bought two motion censored LED lights from Amazon and they were about $40, I believe, $40.99. So what I saved the first month has already paid for the motion lights. And I have two of them down my hallway and uh, when I'm walking down the hallway going into the grow room or perhaps to the kitchen or the guest bedroom, I don't have to turn any lights on. And also I have, I put one that I already had outside uh, in my uh, en suite. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, it's uh, near my bed on my uh, uh, luck love seat and it just comes on automatically and I can make my way into the uh, bathroom and then turn the light on in there so it's really um, economical because all you have to do is just charge the motion sensor LED lights once every two or three days and they only come on when you get near them when it's dark so um, I just wanted to pass that idea along with you all because I know that some of my fellow gardener friends um, have motion sensor lights outside. I have about, I think about 20 of them in the food forest, maybe more. And um, I decided to bring um, that same uh, benefit of having those lights inside my home. And I'm probably going to add a few more inside the home too. Okay. So, I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. All right. Now, let's move on to how I pressure can chicken. Kroger's had chicken uh, thighs and uh, legs on sale for 59 cents a pound. So, I scored 
10 pounds for $5.90. And I occasionally do that throughout the year. And even though it's just me, when I can get a good bargain on chicken or fish, I will um, bring it home and pressure can it. So let me show you how I did it. The first thing I did was I went through the pieces and picked, you know, any bad part off of it. And then I put it in this big, heavy turkey roaster. And I'll show you in the next clip what I did. So I baked this chicken at 350 degrees with the top on this roaster. And you can see I'm barely... Well, um, I should have got a fork, but I can, I'm just barely moving it. You can see that it's falling all off the bone. So I would let this cool, just barely touching it. I'll let it cool, and I'll put on some gloves, and I would debone the chicken. And fill it my jars up, sanitized jars, and lids, and then pressure can it for 90 minutes for quarts, 75 minutes for pints. So easy, look at me, I'm just stirring it with a little small spoon. And it's coming off the bone very easily. Gardeners, I wanna share with you how I removed the fat off of the broth. I refrigerated. Then all of the fat will solidify and go and rise to the top. And all I have to do is just scrape it off. And then the part that gels is actually the chicken broth that I'm gonna to add to these containers. Okay. I'll be right Now there. that I have removed most of the fat, I'm going to warm up the broth. But I'm not going to throw this chicken fat away. I'm going to can it as well because you can scoop this up, maybe a couple of tablespoons, and put it into uh, when you're steaming, let's say broccoli or cauliflower, any type of vegetable, and you'll get some flavoring. Okay. And that's when you don't want to add meat to your uh, vegetables. Okay, YouTubers, when I said I wanted to warm up the broth, you can see my hand is on here. It's not hot because these were not hot packed. So we don't want to put hot broth over there with um, over the meat because we don't want to, uh, to shock the meat, crack the uh, jars. We are going to pressure can them and we will start off with tepid water, room temperature water, going into the canner. So now, I'm going to take some of the broth, and I'm going to pour it, I hope you can see this, yes you can, and into each jar, about a scoop and a half should do it, and then I will debubble it. I'm not going to uh, make this a long drawn out video and do each one on camera. I'm going to do all of them and then I'll come back, okay? It's uh, 6.48 in the morning and I'm going to take the top off of the bone broth and it has been cooking for 24 hours. And Bone broth is very healthy, healthy for you. And I'm going to remove the bones and the fat that was still left in the pot, like so. And I'm going to can this as well. It was on real low while I slept. Okay, just want to share that with you guys. Okay, YouTubers, I have debubbled each jar. This one is the one that has the fat in it, and I put just a little fat on top of each of these jars because it will give uh, whatever you decide to make out of it uh, more flavor. 
And remember to fill them up to about an inch of the jar. And these are wide mouth jars and my lids are heating up. So now I'm going to take uh, vinegar on a piece of paper towel over here. And I'm going to make sure that I wipe the rim of each jar about four times so that I can get any oil or moisture off of the top where that rim is going to seal that jar. Okay? I'll be back. Satisfied that I thoroughly clean the rims of the jars. Now I'm going to take my lid, magnetic lid picker rubber, if I can just get one. And then I'm going to put it on top of the jar. And I'll put one on each one. Some of them are stuck together because I don't reuse lids. So these are new. I know some people do, but I don't. I don't want to take a chance. If anything bad happening, so I use new lids every single time. And I'm going to come back when I got them all on. This is taking me a while. Okay, I'll be back. And now I'm putting the rings on, and you just want to do them finger tight, not real tight. You'll tighten them up again after you they come out of the canner. Now I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, you guys can look at some other videos that I made if you want to see how I pressure can. I'm just going to go ahead on and pressure can and bring you back for the results. And I'll leave a link to how you should pressure can this. And meet always 90 minutes in quarts. This is a little bit less than a quart, but I'm not going to do 75 minutes. I'm going to do 90 to be on the safe side. My favorite part of the canning process is when I take the jars out of the pressure canner and they are still boiling and I put them on top of a wood cutting board with a towel on top of the cutting board and then I usually lay either some towels or paper towel across the top to absorb any moisture that is still on the canning uh, lids. And, and rims or rings and I leave them just like this for 24 hours and then tomorrow I will rinse off the jars and tighten up you can hear it that one just popped did you hear it that means it's sealed but it's so cool to see that another one just sealed And I just buy replacement uh, lids. Some of these are getting old, so I'm probably gonna start buying some more rings. That's a nice filling. Another one. Did you hear it? The sweetest sound of canning is when they ping. Okay. Another one. That's my grow light over there on my uh, soursop trees. <laughs> it's real gloomy out. As soon as I cut this camera off, that's when they'll ping. Okay, guys, so these are the last four that I took out of the camera. <laughs> I couldn't get them all in, so we have some chicken here and then this is the bone broth bone broth and bone broth and when i don't have enough to fill up a can or i keep these two right here 
a pint and a quart. It's just sterile water that just keeps the can away down so that, um, yeah, so I can uh, can caution batches. So this concludes uh, this video. I hope I shared something that you can use. And remember, when you catch meat, I don't eat beef, but maybe twice a year I'll have a burger, and I don't eat pork. And it's not for religious reasons. This is the doctor told me that I need to not eat it for health reasons. So I just eat fish and seafood and chicken. And so if you find something that you enjoy, whether it is green beans or, or beans or peas or peaches when they're in season, whatever it is, if you can get a good deal, Learning how to can is a very good skill to have because we need to learn how to not be reliant on grocery store food. I was in a, um, watching a video of one of my favorite YouTubers, my mentor, I call him, Ned Farmer 73, and he was talking about how we are killing ourselves by eating chemicals in processed foods that we can't even pronounce. And manufacturers are smart. They will um, change the names and switch it up on you and you really don't know what you're eating. So I'm trying to eat whole foods uh, grown as organically as I can. Is everything organic in my garden? No, because I don't know where the seeds uh, come from or how they were grown or if I buy a tree, was it organically grown? But I can tell you this, Everything, once it hits my food forest, or my greenhouse, or my grow room, I organically grow it once it gets to my residence. So, just try to eat better, you'll live longer. I'm trying to get up all this stuff on medicine to have me on. Okay guys, I'm out. If you haven't clicked the thumbs up button and subscribed, I hope you do now. The end. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye now.